So now we're gonna deviate just a little bit from body movement and talk about this thing, the baton. So many people ask what is this and what does it do and why is it here? For a long time, conductors didn't use batons, but now we use them pretty regularly in everything that we do. But how do you find the right baton that fits you, that makes sense for you, that feels good in your hand? And then again, what is the appropriate grip that you should be using or even just a basic grip when you hold the baton? So let's start just deciding how do we get the right baton for you? There's a lot of different baton makers out there. You can go to conventions, find online, and, and you can find a lot of different people that will custom make batons, or you can find some that are already made. Different sizes, shapes, and colors, different woods, different types of shaft, whether it's fiberglass, wood, or even a graphite shaft like this one is. There's many different types of batons that you can buy, so there's a lot of variables in terms of what you can look for. One of the first things you should do when you pick up a baton is not put it in your hand and start violently waving around at the convention. I promise you I will laugh at you if you stand there and do that at the convention. What I'd love to see you do is pick up that baton, take your right arm, bend it just slightly at the elbow, take the back of the baton and place the very back of the handle right at the crease of your elbow and lay it flat on your arm. That baton should land right at the end of the palm or where the middle finger meets the palm here. The purpose for that is the baton should be an amplifier of your arm. That being said, it needs to be exactly the length of your forearm. And again, the way we test that is placing the back of the handle in the elbow and laying it flat out to here. If I use a baton that's too small for me, look how funny this looks when I conduct. This doesn't look natural. So you have to find a baton that's the exact length of your forearm. Now again, there's many different types of handles. I already discussed different types of shafts, but the handles come in various sizes and shapes. This one actually has a small weight that's placed in the back to balance out this baton. Really good professional batons are balanced right here where the handle meets the shaft. If your baton doesn't balance this way, don't spend the money on it. You have to have a baton that's properly balanced. This is gonna be afforded to you to be efficient on the podium. The different types of handles, as I said, come in different shapes. I prefer this teardrop shape simply because it fits in my hand. Something different may work for you. Whether you have larger hands or smaller hands, you may want a baseball size handle that's made out of styrofoam, or you may want a tiny little wood handle that has a really interesting shape because of the way that your fingers hold the baton in your hand. It's a completely personal choice and up to you. Now let's talk about baton grip. The first thing you wanna do with baton grip is put out your right hand like you're gonna shake someone's hand. Take the back of the baton and place it in the middle of your hand. If any of you have gone through any type of percussion, you'll know that the fulcrum point is the point that's here between the thumb and the first index finger. When we find the fulcrum, that's exactly where we want the handle of the baton to meet the shaft of the baton. So I will place the handle right here into the fulcrum point in my right hand. I will wrap the fingers around the back of the baton you'll notice my back two fingers aren't actually touching the baton, just the middle fingers holding onto it. Again, this may be different for you depending on the handle that you have. You may have a slightly larger handle that you like to sit further back so all of your fingers are gripping the baton. For me, preferably, I like to have the fulcrum point touching the handle to the shaft and the other fingers wrapped around behind comfortably. You'll also notice that there's a slight gap here between the thumb and the index finger. It's not closed. Closing this down creates tension and as we've already talked about, tension is something we want to get out of our conducting. So relax that so that there's space here. Again, still touching between the thumb and the index finger, creating that fulcrum on the baton tip here. So again, let's walk through that process again. Finding the correct baton, finding the correct length that works for you, finding the fulcrum between the handle and the shaft, wrapping the fingers around, and dropping the baton in front of you. Later, we're going to talk about how to set up but finding the grip and the right baton is crucial before we get to anything else in terms of baton technique.